Well, the update on West Pembroke is that the teachers have organized a sick out from um, what we've been be able to ascertain, and we're just um, the situation is developing as we speak, and so we're just doing things. We're doing things that need to be done in order to reach out to the the teachers, the union, and ev and everyone else to ascertain what next steps that we plan to take after this. Well, when the when West Pembroke first announced their work to rule, which happened on a Thursday, uh, two weeks ago, actually two weeks ago yesterday, um, I immediately I, I immediately assembled the team at the department, and I also visited the school to talk to the principal and the teachers to um, let them know that we will be dealing with what it is that they're their um, their issues with. As a result of those meetings, the department met with the principal the following Friday, and the Monday, the next Monday after that, there was um, things put in place to alleviate some of the concerns that the, that the teachers did have. There are some things that have been mentioned that we just can't, there are no, no overnight fixes for, and but we are looking into how we can um, address those as well. Um, one of the things that has been brought up is the lack of a learning support teacher out at West Pembroke, and the narrative has been that West Pembroke has 217 students, but one learning support teacher. What I've been able to been ascertain is that learning support teachers are assigned based on the amount of students that require learning support. And thus far at West Pembroke, there's only six confirmed students that require learning support, hence the need for only one teacher. The, narr the, the thing coming back from the school is that they've identified many more students that possibly need learning support. And so what we've done, and that, and that, is, that happened last week, Monday, was uh, someone was put out there to address those concerns by looking at the students that the school is saying need, or the teachers are saying possibly need learning support, and those students are being tested as we speak. And once that testing is over, there will be an evaluation to see what requires learning support, what, um, what, issue, what things could be put in place within the classroom to address whatever concerns are there. And so if, it, if the results turn out, that, um, turn out that there needs to be additional learning support teachers out there, then that will be addressed as well. Uh, we anticipate that that testing is going to be completed by the end of this term because it only started, um, we only have a, a week, a couple of weeks left in this term, and by January we will have a concrete idea of what needs to be done in terms of if we need to add additional t teachers out there. The other concern was about the um, ASD program that's out there, and um, I, I, the narrative that was given to me this morning was um, from the PTA president that the, NAR the ASD program is the largest in Bermuda, which um, I then went back to my technical staff to ask, um, is that true? And what we've, what I've been told is that there are only six students out there in the ASD program. We have other ASD programs that are larger than that. And with those six students, we have actually um, the ASD teacher and two, para ed and two para educators, making three persons within the room. So that those are the types of conversations we have to have back and forth um, with student services to determine um, is that enough? Um, is that enough teachers in the room, three to the six students, or do we really do require more students? So these are the conversations that we have to have. The other, the other thing that was mentioned was the lack of bandwidth out at the school. Um, all of our schools have a minimum of 10, mega, 10, 10 megabits of bandwidth going to them. And, what, and immediately after hearing that, I had our IT department do an evaluation of what it is that our, or what is this our internet services that are being used up by. Why can't they connect? Because in order to connect, get on your computer and send email or connect to PowerSchool, it doesn't require a lot of internet bandwidth to do that. But what we discovered is um, the bulk of our bandwidth within our schools is being used up for YouTube and, uh, and, and really surprisingly there was Netflix in there as well. And so what we're looking at is, and this is what I talk about, we just have to sit down and have honest dialogue about what's really going on is until we can improve our internet speed, we're probably going to have to put a limit on how much, they, uh, how much um, schools can use those types of services. So there's uh, resources left over to do the things that need to be done, like updating grades, inputting, um, inputting stuff into PowerSchool, um, sending emails, and that sort of thing. Uh, lastly, it had to do with um, disruptive students. And as we all know, we do have a cadre of um, behavioral issues that we're seeing within our schools. Where that is being dealt with as well. We're putting things in place to put the processes in place to address those concerns. And that is something, again, that's not going to be an overnight fix, but it's something that we're working on. What I do want teachers, what I do want parents to know, and the general public to know, is that we're working on these issues. Some of them are long standing, but I don't use that as an excuse. Some of them date back, you know, um, 
three or four ministers ago, but I don't use that as an excuse because this is my job now and it's my job to fix and it's my job to ensure that the things are put in place to ensure that everyone has a comfort level in our education system. So we're not going to shy away from that. I'm not going to shy away from that. And we're going to do the things that need to be done to ensure that our teachers feel comfortable going to the school, but most importantly, our students are comfortable are confident that when they pass through our system, they will have a quality education behind them. How do you see the relationship between the school and even being a team uh, moving forward? Well, what, what I want, what I would like to, um, I would like to see some of these concerns that are expressed by the teachers filtered to the department faster and better than how they've been, how they may have been filtered in the past. So it's up to us to put things in place now where we are having, we have a more open relationship with the BUT and they're able to not only bring us, bring us the concerns of the teachers, but also possible solutions as well. And we're in a position where when concerns come and we're having on it, we're having dialogue back and forth, that they are able to go back to the teachers and, and present the dialogue that we're having and come back with more, more, um, suggestions on how we can solve some of these things and also we need the we we need the BUT to also help us explain some of the things because sometimes we hear of issues and you know like I said they just can't be solved overnight but they can be worked on bit by bit